And dude, his voice. Oh my god. I literally, I'm, I'm, my eyes are watering from like nostalgia of it all. Hello everyone, welcome in. My name is Kai Zamet. I'm a director, cinematographer and writer based in the south of the UK. And today in this video, I'm going to give you my reaction and a filmmaker's breakdown to Halo 3, a Starry Night cinematic. Thanks to a recent Halo poll on the Patreon, our next Halo game we're looking at is Halo 3. So we're on the road now to Halo 3 cinematic, so all cutscenes. And to start off, let's start with a TV spot, shall we? Let's go, play the tape. Oh, you ever straight in. What's up there? Like what? Maybe it's someone lovely. up there was wondering what it's like here. I guess. Oh, it's well dark. Do you think we'll ever meet them? I hope so. Don't you? Oh, mate, what the fuck? Do you think we'll ever meet them? Oh, is that him as a kid? Mate, this bleach bypass look. Dude, I wonder why his helmet was off. That makes sense. Not yet. Oh, that voice. Oh, shit. Mate, look at that motion blur. The camera. His legs looked a bit weird then, but that was awesome. Ah, oh, God. Do you know what I mean? Imagine having a full sequence like that. It's always the short ones, isn't it? The, short, the ones that are short, that are done extremely well, are the ones that you don't want to end. And that's exactly what I got with that. Holy shit, that was good. Before I get all excited like a little boy in the breakdown, I just want to tell you something. And yes, before you think you've gone mad, I have changed my top. Not quite Master Chief Green, but I was inspired by today's cinematic. What I actually wanted to tell you boys is these smart, stylish looking pants I'm wearing. These bad boys. They're the most comfiest pants I have ever worn. And I'm not even joking. But who makes these final boss quality pants? I'll tell you. Into the AM. Into the AM sent me a pair of the all day pants to try out to prove to me that they are as good as they say they are. And I kid you not, they really are. Boss level comfort and style actually fit true to size and value for money. Oh boy, yes they are. What I personally love about them is they look really smart, but it feels like I'm wearing jogging bottoms, like lounge pants. I filmed a masterclass recently, and because these look business meeting ready, give me that professional aesthetic, I wore them in the recordings. And because of the premium four-way stretch fabric, I could easily move around on set and build the lighting rigs needed for the day's filming. Into the AM took a year to perfect these bad boys, and as I see it, it was time well spent. These are ridiculously good. So good, in fact, I'm buying myself another two pairs in different colours with my discount code. I'll leave a link for you as well in the description box. All you've got to do is click on it. Not only does that link help support this channel, it also gets you 10% off across the entire site. And trust me when I say this, once you whack these bad boy pants on, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you so much to Into The Aim for sponsoring today's video and sending me these epic pants. Right then, back to the video. I already knew in my mind that this was going to be good because it was the peak Halo 3, yeah, or just peak Halo in general. From what I've seen from Halo Reach, uh, ODST, and this, I just, I wasn't worried at all. I just knew this was going to be something special. So yeah, let's break this down, shall we? Yep. Straight away, boom, you're into the actual cinematic. No fades in, as in fade from blacks, no fade from whites, no pre-logos, no pre-cards, straight in. Ever wonder what's up there? And what I love about it, it's clever commercial writing as well. And what I mean by that is, what I always say, the rule of thumb, how I like to write my commercials, or the commercials that I'm directing or writing, whatever it is, is I like in the open sentence to tell you what the story is. And that's what he says, doesn't he? Let's go back. You ever wonder what's up there? You ever wonder what's up there? And it's interesting, isn't it? Because Halo, the, the whole thing is about fighting, well, big space war, isn't it? I guess. I just love it. I just think it's brilliant. Like what? Maybe. Was that camera? You... Hang on. Go back five. You ever wonder what's up there? Look at that. Look. Look at the way the camera is slowly dollying forward towards them. Okay. But it's pedestaling down, even though it's looking at them. But it's on a slight rotation. It's just giving you that full cinematic experience, isn't it? I mean, go back five. I love this already. Look at it, look. See it rotating, look at the grass. Straight in the middle. Beautiful, and this nice deep patch of grass. Like what? Maybe someone up 
Look at the framing. Look, let me go back uh, five. I wonder what's up there. Like what? Maybe someone up there? Yeah, look, it's just slowly dollying forward. It's always moving. That's what I love about it. It's very cinema. They knew exactly what they were doing with this. They knew it. There, I was wondering what it's like here. I guess. Do you think we'll ever meet them? I hope so. Don't you? I love it. What a beautiful piece of dialogue that was. Isn't it? There. Do you ever wonder what's up there? And we've all had those conversations. But for them, being that they're off Earth... Actually, I yeah, John wasn't born on Earth. I, I assume he's in some sort of... Uh, a lot, if I remember correctly, a lot of the Spartans were outer colonies that they Maybe were born. Someone up there was one isn't it beautiful? What it's like here. And that drone, that diegetic sound, yeah, the foley. Of, of hardly any clothes, sorry, the sound effects of the wind rustling and things like that. I guess. And look at this, look, all this dirty framing. Okay, they want you to look here, the way they've lit her up. But look at this, look, they've covered everything up. So your eyes, when you're looking, that's why it's called dirty framing, is you're centred, your eyes are drawn to a certain part. That's where you, when you get dialogue scenes and you get someone's sort of like dirty framing when someone's covering half the scene, or the shot, should we say, they, you can, that's why your eyes are drawn to the character that's speaking. And look at this lovely lighting, okay? So even though it's overhead, this is why it looks very cinematic, okay? Look, the lighting's coming from up here, but it's slightly pushed back, so it's not directly overhead. So what it's doing is giving you a backlighting here, just very subtly backlighting. And look at this shadow, because I don't want to reveal who they are. Do you think we'll ever meet them? But do you know, look at this. I always talk about catchment in the eyes. It's slightly catchment in their eye. The way that would work out, you, you would still get a little bit of catchment in the eye, but realistically, you probably wouldn't. Um, I don't think you would, because look how dark that boy was. Unless that light's coming off her, it doesn't make sense. But they've put this little catchment in here, here and here, because they want... It almost looks demonic there, doesn't it, when you look at it like that? But they've done that because they want you to look into her eyes. Okay? Why do they want you to look into their eyes? Because that is how you get a human connection by the way that's a secret human eyes or just a human story or human connection even if it's an animal is the best way of telling a story even if it was um a puppet or anything uh, a character or some sort of humanoid animal or something we connect with them because we take human traits and it's the human stories is is part of that is what we connect with so if you're ever creating a story or something or writing a game about a creature, an animal, an alien, whatever. It'll be the human elements that makes that story more connectable and better. Which is interesting because the Master Chief hardly is not really human, is he? Effectively, he's almost like a machine. But yet we still connect with him. Why? Because we know he's in there and with those close-ups that they do on his helmet. Like what? Maybe someone up there. I'm absolutely in love with this. What it's like here. That sound. I guess. Do you think we'll ever meet them? And it draws you in more. And it draws you in more because there's no music. It's just that drone sound and the sound, that diegetic sound. Diegetic means... The reason why I keep using the term diegetic now, I haven't done it in the past, is actually someone reminded me that you guys are learning this stuff, so I can use more film terms. So diegetic is sound that in the world that is happening. Non-diegetic is sounds that only we can hear, okay? So it's not happening in the world. So think voiceover or music soundtrack. Look at this. I love it. Layers, yeah? You've got your foreground, yeah? Which kind of he comes under. Technically, he, you'd want him to be your main ground, but no, look, grass is your main ground. And then you've got the starry night, which is what the trailer's called, in it, or the cinematic's called, or this TV spot. It's gorgeous. Look at this, again. So bear in mind, we just had a... I just... Let's go back, five. So, okay, so look at the sun. Um, look at the sun. Look at the moon. Yeah, it's lit uh, from over here, yeah, but look at the way the light's on her. You would say that's a little bit further back. It's wrapping round slightly to the front, but actually it's behind her, okay? So when we go into, I'm assuming this is John, technically, the way that lighting would work is he would be lit from the front. Does that make sense if it was a real-world lighting? But they don't want you to, they didn't want to do that because it takes away the mystery. You use shadow to mask your subject, which is what they've done in high detail. And they've done that here. Look, a little catchment. But he's beautifully backlit, isn't he? Don't you? 
Because he he because he's got like no lighting at all, is he? Oh, that was all quick. Go back, you bastard. Look, she's got mainly it. He's got hardly anything. But technically, the way she was lit, he would have loads, wouldn't he? Look at this little catchment in the eye. Does he do a blink turn? Don't you? He does as well. Fuck me. These are so good. Okay, so what's the relevance of a blink turn? Oh, she does it in all. It's like here. Basically, a blink turn is something that you do to, rather than you see the the horribleness of the eye, the, the micro jitters of an eye moving, you do a blink turn to make it more powerful. You don't always do it. It just makes it look a little bit more beautiful on camera. I do it a lot with uh, female talent if I'm ever doing it up close. Or, or male, but female primarily because the lovely long lashes. They're talking about a product. They'll be like, it's lovely. Do you know what I mean? It's stuff like that rather than, it's lovely. But watch her. So she's blinking, yes. yeah? Do you think we'll ever meet them? So she does like a little double blink, so it looks a bit more natural. But she still blinks turns. I hope so. Don't you? And easy's a slow, don't you? Do you? And look at this. I love it. They put the helmet there, okay? So they're, they're almost they're foreshadowing his future. It's gorgeous. I did wonder. I was like, why the fuck's his helmet there? And look at this. I love it. You can see the grass moving in it. Beautifully done, isn't it? And you get your match cut, okay? A match cut is, well, pretty much exactly where it says on the tin, isn't it, really? I hope so. It's a, um... Don't you? Oh. Here we go. So it's exactly, so it's one cut, okay? And it matches frame by frame. Boom. You can see it there. Yeah. Boom. They do a little fade on it. Oh, they do a fade on it. How interesting. Most of these things, it would be a harsh cut. So it would be like, because obviously you've got that sound effect of them, of children or people screaming. Boom, straight into it. But it's not, it's a very subtle, it's about a three frame fade. Totally did not expect that. Really interesting. Look, here we go. What? One, two, oh, I said two. Either that or it's the version that I'm watching because I think this is my, um, I'm watching a 4K render of it which means that they might have added like an AI um, sort of thing on it. I don't know where you want to sort of an upscaler. They might have interpreted the footage and added an extra frame in between. But so cool. I love it. And you get this bleach bypass look, okay? Completely different look from here. Look, very contrast. You can barely see the detail. Boom. And then we go into almost like a high key look. A high key. Look, he's where the background matches the front. Okay, so if your subject is lit like this, so we're looking at Master Chief's helmet, the background is almost as lit as him or as the helmet. Okay, you've still got contrast here. Look at the color grade. I call this like a bleach bypass. And what that is, is it's a bit like um, Saving Private Ryan. Their color grade was a bleach bypass. What it does, it draws all the color out and it just makes it very bleak. But obviously it works for this because it's space and it kills off all the grass, doesn't it? this rapid tilt because it's meant to be his head look at the fucking quality of that wow got the texture in the knuckles gorgeous and you've got these overexposed bits so it's harsh in the eyes let's go back five and go in <coughs> <coughs> that noise Do you think we'll ever meet them? and then you've got the character haven't you do you think we'll ever meet them He's playing back his memories. Time to go. Dude, they are so clever. There is so much information in this one section. This is why I love breaking this shit down. It's so good. Let's go back 10. Go back 5. So we've got a match cut. It does a rapid tilt up. The sound effects brought us in, yeah? We still haven't got any music. It's purely just, it's purely uh, diegetic sound, isn't it? Because it's his sound in his head. Do you think we'll and it's rapid. Do you think, so that, do you think we'll ever meet them? Would be, well, technically that was in his mind. So you would probably class that as diegetic, but it's mainly for us. So you'd say that's non-diegetic sound, yeah? I love the detail in this. Like, look at the visor. I love it, this bleach bypass look it's harsh sun heavy look the sun's right up in the middle of the day it's the time of shot shooting that you don't want normally it's always very very pretty isn't it? it's always 
sunrise and sunset, very soft lighting. This is not. This is bleak. This is harsh. Look at this. Harsh shadows. Very stylistic. Cut to black. So we now entered into the character that we know. And this is what I want you to look at, okay? So you've got the sound effects of um, where your ears are ringing, okay? But look at the way the camera is placed, okay? Let's go back five. So it's all wonky, yes. We're using the motion of the camera to tell you how he's feeling. He puts his helmet on. The camera is up here. It's all but it all but strafes him, okay? Look, it's coming around. It's off its axes, and the sound effects. He focuses, the camera returns its axes. How fucking cool is that? How good are they? I've got to watch it again. I'm sorry, guys. Do you think we'll ever meet them? I love this. I'm literally in love with this. Swoops around. Everything dropping around him. Chief, Chief, she's going. Boom. Then the sound comes back. I love it. We are in the world. But look at this framing. That, to me, is a background. That is gorgeous. Look, guys. Look at our elements, yeah? Our layers in the cinematography. Our foreground. Our may ground. And our background into the sky and all the explosions of this. <clears throat> I would have said that was slightly out of focus. So it's giving us texture, okay? As in it's giving us layers. So I would have said this is probably more background treated. He is the main focus. But you could put those two layers together. But look at the framing, yeah? You rule the thirds. He's banging in the middle, pretty much. His head slightly off. Got the, this over here on the left side frame, and on the right frame, you've got the turned over warthog. And it all makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. They've explained the beginning was all about. Do you think there's anyone up there? And the next thing, he's looking up at the sky again from the ground, isn't he? It's very clever. Let's go back. I hope so. It's really clever, right? It's really. It's all about layers. OK, what they call this is story within a story. And this is called a subtext because it's a subtext is a story that has been spoken, but not the audible wise, as in it's all um, psychology, basically. Sees his helmet. He looks back up to the sky where he was as a child. Yeah, very deep in layers. Now he gets up. Wow. And it pulls focus, didn't it? See that? Lovely. He's the main focus. Watch it. Whoop. Just to tell you, this is what he's looking at. Marines combat now. Wow. This shot is incredible. Do you know what? I really wish, looking at this part here, this makes me really wish there was a movie. I know we've got the TV show. And by the way... I am, you're going to hear it here first, I am going to cover the very first episode of season two, because I've seen season one, but I do want to cover season two, because the pilot episodes, even though technically it's not a pilot, put the most money in. Will it do enough to draw me back in? But I want to do that, guys. I want to cover that for you guys, because I know some of you have been asking. But look at this, dude. Seriously, what the fuck? Tilting down from the top. Look, they're planting the seed for this, which is the, oh God, what are those tanks called? Are they race? Rafe plasma fire? <laughs> the sound effect. Room. Oh, the sound effects. The foley of it. Oh. Not yet. And dude, he's voice. Oh my god. I literally, I'm, I'm, my eyes are watering from like nostalgia of it all. How much I miss, how much I miss Halo as a as a fan. And it, but it, as it's prime, but it's also mixed with all the other nostalgia that you get as a kid, what you, what you were doing at that time. Because as you guys might know, I cut off after Halo 3. I missed ODST and I missed Reach. I kind of just, <clears throat> I gave up on it all. Well, life and co colleges and things like that. Look at this. Boom. The dust. Oh, I love it. Look at this. Look at this harsh light in the case. So the sun is up high. And he's lit from, I'd probably say a 90 degree angle because the way he's lit over here, our key light, which means our main source of lighting. And look at this, very stylistic. He's covered in shadow. But because it is bright, it's very high key lighting, he does have it wrapped around him. It's very soft. 
that that would be a lot more shadowy on that on the frame right here if that was real life that would be a lot harsher but they want you to see the armor yeah they want you to look at it all and go wow how cool is that like i'm doing now and look at the background story sir i think we lost him not yet do you know what i mean he's doing it isn't he yeah it, it, they're telling you the story you don't it i love it it's just so fucking clever i could watch this all day and you've seen his visor. Look at this. Look at the detail on it. And the diegetic sound. Yeah, the, the real life in-world sound effects that you are hearing. Let's go back five. And I want to hear that grenade. Not yet. Yeah, the thread of storytelling. So the thread of storytelling is, is very clever. Let's go back five. I'm watching his visor. Okay, we're seeing this go up. So this is telling us what's happening. We see it in his visor. He sees something. I love this style. Oh, I love it. It's so good. Yeah, the thread of storytelling. So we've gone from there to here. He's looking at it. His head, not yet. His head goes down. Camera tilt to the grenade. Okay, that is the thread of storytelling. That's how you get from the beginning of your commercial or film or movie, whatever you're creating, to the end. A to B on a perfect flow of motion. Yeah, that thread of storytelling. I wonder what the hell he was doing here. I, did, I couldn't quite work out what it was. And look at that. Oh, it was a uh, little fucking dirty mongoose there as well. This bit is wow. Oh, I, I, my English is breaking down now. Wow. Boom. He goes in. Is that a little, little whip out? That was really interesting. They did a little zoom out, didn't they? So we, normally like this, with cinema... Okay, cinema is shot on prime lenses, so that means you don't change the focal length. But with this, they add like a little video game zoom or zoom out. Not yet. Which is interesting. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I can see why they did it because, it, again, it was they're drawing you into what he's done and then they're like, whoop, come out to show. Did they do it at the same time as that over? Is it an overshield? This ball thing? No, they didn't. I thought it, they would have, as they zoomed out, the ball would have gone. Can you imagine how cool that would have been. Yeah, let's go back, what, five? Imagine it went in, it zoomed out as it went. But maybe they did that because they didn't want your eyes to be taken away from up here. Let's have a look. What did they go? Yeah, so they wanted you. So the reason why they did that, and instead of doing it my way, is they zoomed out, your eye goes up here to this big ball of plasma yeah and then that's very that's very clever let's go back five watch it again guys watch what our eyes do okay it's really interesting very distorting boom goes in zoom out we look up here what the fuck is that then we're over here see how quick our eyes turn through all that motion just within a few seconds and this bit is my favorite the reason why i love this is because it feels like a real camera this is where cgi or um, trailers and things like this go wrong in video games is they, they're very floaty cameras. To make your CGI, your animation or whatever it is that you're doing to feel more realistic, make the camera feel like there's a camera operator on it. Does that make sense? So when he throws it in, nice and stable, yeah. Camera's shaking because he's emphasizing the, the plasma that's just blown up. That stopped it. Look at the camera. The camera's still going. He runs. Look at the motion. Why does that look so epic? Because it's on a telephoto lens. So the camera is, or it doesn't have to be, um, it's, it's basically harshly zoomed in, okay? So what that does is it compresses the background. Look, so when he runs, the camera moves with it. Oh my fucking God, that is so good. And the reason why it's good is because it's on a telephoto lens, it's zoomed in, the camera's moving with him. It looks, it gives us the impact. Or it gives us the motion of what he's doing, the energy. You can feel it through the camera, which then translates to us as an audience. That is how you fucking do it. Let's go back 10. Crazy. Mate, I could just, I'm going to get face ache from all this shit. Look at him go. I, I love it. The, the music kicks in. Everything's building up to a riser. And then we've got that lovely... And then you get your voice over. Rated M for Mature, which is very commercial-esque. Let's go back. We're not finished with this.
Okay, so the reason why it looks really epic, as I said, it compresses the background. Okay, the motion of the camera moves. But look, as he moves, this cloud of smoke drifts past him with ease. Okay, it's so blurred. But the odd frame being really sharp. Just so that helps our eye navigate where he is, yeah? Otherwise, if it was all blurry, you wouldn't be able to see what the hell was going on. You need that frame or two to plant the seed of going, oh shit, I can see the chief and he's moving crazy fast. Look, look at this. Look, it's just blurred. Oh, that was interesting. They did a little... Whoop. Yeah, look. Little transition. Very clever. Because technically, what was that? It meant to be there, was it? Oh, I like that. That's very clever. Rather than having just a random cut from the back, they make it flow easier because there's this crash. Whoop. That sound effect, yeah? The diegetic sound of the world. It goes full screen. There we are, look, and then he comes through the smoke. Beautiful. Very, that is very clever. And look, the camera then picks up the motion. Look how fucking fast he's running. It's not a snow... Uh, you'd, you'd be in it. That's not running. That's like... That's not running. That's a fucking in a car sort of motion speed. Yeah, that's like, I don't know, 20 m miles an hour running at him. And it goes up on a crane on a jib. Straight over the top. Look at it. Lovely. By the way, that's how you'd create that in real life. You do it from the side, it'd be on a cart going along next to him. Then this would be another car, or actually this would be, um, you'd pop, uh, how would you do this? Would you do this on a car? You'd probably do it on a car, or you'd have a massive crane jib head over here, carrying the camera, going really fast and lifting up, and you'd probably program it, and so you've always got the same motion. That's how you'd shoot that in real life. Because otherwise the car wouldn't, wouldn't be able to stop. Um, but that's how you can get those. You, you have to go the same speed they are to emphasize of the speed that the subject is moving. So like cars and things like that. This is the only thing that looked a bit bizarre to me. Was that, was it his, how wide his legs were? That looks, that looks a bit bizarre to me. It looks all right there. It looks almost like a bit like an action figure here. That's the only thing I think looks a bit bizarre. I almost feel like his legs should be in a bit more but I think they wanted to make sure that you could clearly see the, the, the layers behind him like his little fucking green pants <laughs> <coughs> let's go one more time <clears throat> oh, bastard it looks so good and look at this is it do you, do you think now this is a question for the Halo fans if this was real not real life but real Halo with what was that? Well, they two race. There's no way the Master Chief's fucking beating all them. What? All these? No way, mate. And all this? No way. There's no way the Chief would survive that. But that's the beauty of the Master Chief. And they set you up in this. But they've done this to make the commercial look fucking banging, yeah? But for us, we know, in game, that's just, just not doable. But the point is, if you are a returning Halo fan, you're like, how's the Chief getting out of this? I guess we'll have to play it to find out. It's clever, isn't it? It's always, it's part of the subtext, that story within the story. They're planting seeds on you. This is what makes it a fantastic commercial, because it is a commercial. I love that shot. I am so in love with this. I might use this to... Uh, when I teach uh, certain students, I have I run certain sometimes college classes or if I do university classes, I might have to use this because it's a minute of commercial and it tells you all the story, so many layers of story, the kid, uh, them as children, foreshadowing the future, asking that question, are they up there? Boom, I hope I meet them. And he ends up being the fucking slayer of them. Look at this, nice. Camera straight down. And he's looking down, isn't he, yeah? Technically, he wouldn't be. He'd be looking around him, but he's looking down. Unless or unless he's killing a brute but the point is he's looking at the camera it makes it more powerful boom cut to black beautiful logos come in or end cards is what we call them Rated M for mature. Oh. and it's fucking cool and it says jump in and that's what he does and there you have it i really enjoyed that i thought that was well i just thought it was fucking fantastic to be honest i am now really excited the thing is, I know the cutscenes are not going to be to that quality. I know that. I've played 
Halo 3 years and years ago as a kid. Yeah, I remember the story, parts of the story. I don't remember all of it clearly. So that's why I'm really excited to see the cutscenes now as a filmmaker. As I've learned, my, this is my craft. Yeah, I didn't have this skill when I was a fucking kid. So when I watch this stuff now, it's almost like I'm seeing it with a whole new set of lenses, eyes, optics, whatever you want to call them. You know what I mean? So I'm really excited. And this was the perfect way to set up Halo 3, all the cutscenes, which is coming very soon, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Out of time!